and you can still see my back. Some will argue that I'm wrong there. Mother messed up my joke. How about now, Tara? You happy now? Oh my goodness. Chris from Propel here, and there's a plane above us again. Went a little off script on that one. So it's been 10 years since I started this electric bike business and I figure it's about time that I actually tell the whole story of how this thing started. Now I've done different interviews and talked about the history, but I haven't really told the full story, at least in more of a public forum. There's some things that I'm not always so like comfortable about or excited about, but you know, my history is my history. So today I'm gonna talk about how I started this electric bike business that now is two stores, one in Brooklyn, New York, one in Long Beach, California, with a sizable online business and this YouTube channel. And how did I get here? Kind of started with not too much. I want to just share that experience and show how this came about. And this thing effectively started in 2011. And at that time, I was in school full-time for computer science. I was also running a small business doing web design and marketing because I grew up in this place that I wasn't very well-to-do. You know, I was looking for something I was gonna be passionate about and excited about. I said, oh, okay, this is something interesting. Maybe this is something I can get into starting this business and taking my experience of retail and e-commerce and my interest in bikes and technology and bring it together. And so that's what I set out to do. This was the first time starting a business that I needed more capital because I need to buy inventory. And I got a small loan for $20,000. I spent that full $20,000 on inventory and some tools. The name of the business was Fresh Scooters. You know, at this time there was a lot less products available on the market. A short time after that, I realized that I don't really want to be selling scooters. I'd rather just focus on electric bikes. So we actually changed our name to Long Island Electric Bikes, which I should note, we started on Long Island in New York. It was actually the second floor of an industrial building, kind of in the middle of nowhere. We had no signage out front, I mean, no storefront. Most would not consider this place a acceptable bike shop location. But as with most things, I didn't let that little detail stop me and I just had to introduce things a little bit differently. If anybody ever wants to test ride a bike, I had to carry it down this like, you know, practically two flights of stairs. That was not really the ideal scenario, but it just was a way for me to be able to get into this thing. And I always had this aspiration of growing it to be something bigger, for it to be a brand, for it to be something special and recognizable and a way to have some influence in the market. So I just kind of built on that. I, I knew from my previous experience that I wanted to focus on quality. But at this time, I was 30 years old and it was just a really wild time in my life. I was in school full time, I had this web design business and then here I am trying to start this electric bike business. I don't know, I don't know how the heck I pulled that off. I really didn't have much personal life outside of that, unfortunately. In 2012, my brother Kyle came on board who he actually still works with us to this day. It just so happened that he was into bikes at the same time and he was pretty handy and so he was kind of handling more of the service side of things and I was handling and more of the sales side of things. I had my friend Jack, who's a longtime bike enthusiast, really into BMX bikes and just a master mechanic, I would say. He helped me out with some of the things that I didn't necessarily understand early on. 2014, we did a million dollars in sales and that was pretty serious for me. It was the first time having a business to do that much revenue. And I think that milestone kind of helped me build some more confidence in the business, helped me to think more about what I'm gonna do going forward. Around the same time, I was graduating from college and do I try to get a real job, you know, out of school or do I continue down this path of something that's somewhat uncertain. It's definitely growing and there's a lot of excitement around it. But at the time, electric bikes definitely were not nearly what they are today. One out of every three bikes sold in the Netherlands is electric. In Germany, more than one in every five new sales are e-bikes. But here in the U.S., it is barely more than one out of 100. In New York, where I was operating, they were actually illegal, uh, or at least technically considered illegal. I think what happened around that time, I was also starting to understand this electric bike movement thing to be a bit deeper than 
what it was when I first got introduced to it, which was thinking of it as a alternative form of transportation, as a means to lessen our dependence on foreign oil. In 2000, Nolte joined the Army Reserve. He operated fuel supply trucks. A truck landed in a ditch in Kuwait only days before the start of the Iraq War in 2003. That feeling inside of me started to really push me. I guess like through my experience in the military, I felt not so great about the things that I had did there. And I felt like I had to write that. I started to see this as an opportunity to put some more positive things into the world as opposed to some of the perhaps negative things I contributed to. Even though the law was still a little uncertain, the only way that we're gonna actually be able to move this law forward is by having discussions about it, by bringing this out into public. But I happened to go with my friend Jack on a bike ride on a Sunday. We were riding down Flushing Avenue in Brooklyn by the Navy Yard, and I saw this space for rent. It was a brand new building. There was nothing really else going on at the time. And if you can have a test ride in a kind of controlled environment without too much traffic and you can feel safe and comfortable, you could really have a good experience. So I called the person on the phone and I said over the phone, I'll take it. I'm working in this market that's largely unproven. I had to go on my instincts and you have to take some risks. And the crazy thing that was going on at that time was electric bikes were really scrutinized heavily. You know, electric bikes were being confiscated, people were getting fines, all sorts of crazy stuff. Pedal assist electric bikes were technically not considered illegal under the law. Some would say this is a little too risky to make that decision based on the technicality, but I did it. I should note that this was a pretty tough time because we were supposed to get the keys for the space in January. We didn't get the keys till May 1st. We were like missing most of the beginning of our season. So we got the keys May 1st. We opened the doors June 1st. It's pretty wild. Five Borough Bike Tour passes our location and it's in the beginning of May. And we actually set up in front of there and we started to introduce ourselves to the community. Now the name Long Island Electric Bikes wasn't really too fitting in Brooklyn. So I came across this name Propel. I felt really propelled by it and I felt really inspired by it. Somebody once told me you should do what you're passionate about in business because you never know when you're going to be faced with challenges. If you're not passionate, you don't love what you're doing, there's a good chance you're going to feel pretty burnt out when you're faced with some of those challenges. And this was the time that I really started getting faced with challenges. Shortly after that, we got a fine from the city for $25,000. You know, when I said that, oh yeah, we fit into this little gray area that we're selling these pedal assist bikes that are not illegal. Well, if you have an inspector that comes in and they don't actually pay attention to what you're selling and they just say they're gonna write you a violation, you're gonna get it anyway. And, and that's what happened. And fortunately, I got that taken care of. And I did a video on that. If you wanna hear that story, it's pretty interesting. I had this vision. I had this feeling of like what this is gonna eventually be. And I kept you know, having conversations with different people. And I was going to Albany and talking to the governor's office and going to the mayor's office. and doing all this stuff and you know, fortunate to have some support of people around me and some of the industry support and that sort of thing. I felt a little bit like uh, David and Goliath here, like I'm this little guy trying to fight this thing and there's all these big forces fighting against me. One of the big things is really some of the forces that have been put in place by the automobile industry. So this idea was often shut down by a lot of people because it was unfamiliar. At certain points, I think, I just didn't quit. I don't know that I necessarily like moved forward so significantly or anything like that. I think I just tried to continue to show up. And sometimes that's just like the best that you can do. Cause I have to admit, I felt a bit broken at that time. Around the same time, I also started going to Europe. And I always felt really inspired when I went there because I saw what I believe to be the future of what's going on here. And now six, seven years later, I mean, I'm seeing that to be the truth because a lot of these things that are unfolding, it's not like it hasn't happened before. It's happened in many other places. It happened in China, it's happened in Europe, it's happened in other places throughout the world. But I want to introduce it in a new way. And that was part of the mission and vision behind Propel to introduce electric bikes in a way that it hasn't been presented before. That it wasn't just like something cooked up in a garage, that this was a serious machine. I guess that was also part of what had really interested me in Europe because I was seeing these machines developed in a new way. I mean, around 2014 was when Bosch came to the US and I think they started to develop this new standard around electric bikes, that it wasn't just this like toy, that it was a real machine that was built to more like automotive specifications. I was looking to find the best electric bikes 
in the world, if you will. And I would ask the brands if they come to the US and they say, ah, no, you know, US, the market's too small. You guys sue too much. We don't want to work with you. I knew they had something special there and I knew that eventually they would see that there is something special here, that there's some potential here. But eventually, you know, they came around. Uh, it wasn't easy. And I guess what I saw consistently, Bosch was showing up and, and we just continued to focus on working with them. And just over time, our quality continued to improve. We got better brands came on board. In 2016, I finally convinced Reese and Mueller to come here. I had been asking them for years and somehow they believed in what I was saying and the possibilities of what I was presenting there. And I'm really grateful that they took some faith in that and, and kind of joined the party here, if you will. And I think that helped change things because here was a product that was really being introduced as a true transportation solution that was built really heavy duty and really built to last and built to be like a long-term supported product. And I decided that I wanted to try to operate in a place where electric bikes were a little bit more accepted, that I'm not getting fines from the city for trying to help the city. So I decided to move to California and set up our second location. And I did that in 2018. And not long after that, we started this YouTube channel. Propel overall as a brand has shifted quite a bit from that point. And that brings us to here. Reflecting back on it 10 years later, I'm pretty glad that I made the decision to stick with my passion and really go for something that I was not so clear about or not so comfortable with at the time. And that's what I'm gonna continue to do, to hopefully make more of these videos, to bring electric bikes to more people, whether it's through these videos or through our stores, which I plan to open more of them. You know, I guess that's part of it too, just like to build a team, to build opportunities for other people. I think that that's one of the things that really gets me excited today, to be able to work with pretty amazing people in my organization, to give people opportunities, to be able to have a positive impact on people's lives. I mean, if I could go to work every day knowing that I'm doing that, I feel pretty good about it. But I guess ultimately, I'd just like to say thank you. You know, so many people have supported Propel and me along the way, whether it's our customers or employees or partners, etc. And I really know truly I could not have done it without the support of people around me or people that believed in this idea that I believed in. I'm just really looking forward to seeing what the future holds from here. What's the next 10, 20 plus years? I hope you'll join us. So, see you soon.